this is a, a model of an what is currently uh, an 82 foot hull it's a planing hull and it has a beam of about 23 feet and uh, the structure has already been pretty well defined in max surf structure um, I'll turn the uh, the plate off so that you can see what that looks like I'll turn the stringers on and I'll zoom in a little bit and we'll ro rotate it a little so what max surf structure uh, does in a different in addition to the hull plate is let you model all of the transverse frames the bulkheads the decks the longitudinal uh, stiffeners uh, longitudinals or stringers uh, also girders as well there's no girders in this model and you can include a fair amount of detail including the cutouts in the frames you can choose to either uh, include the cutouts or not. There is a sections library um, of all kinds of different structure as well as uh, different materials. And uh, right now this is modeled with uh, T sections. So this is what the, the current original model look like with this vessel modeled with a beam of 83 feet. But what we want to do is we want to increase the beam. Uh, let's say hypothetically we had a client that wants a vessel similar to this, but they just want it a couple of feet wider. So we're not going to make that initial change in MaxSurf structure. We're going to use MaxSurf Modeler to change the hull first. So let me switch over to my desktop and we'll fire up MaxSurf Modeler and we'll open up that hull. This is the, uh, the existing hull model um, in MaxSurf Modeler. We're going to first unlock the design. So now we can see the actual control net, which is how we make changes to the model. Uh, MaxSurf Modeler has the ability to use uh, symmetry, uh, which is typical for naval architects. So I can turn symmetry on or off. And what we'll do, uh, we're just going to make a change to the beam by simply using uh, a feature. It's, it's, uh, this is included with uh, the basic modeler and it allows you to use proportional scaling to change surfaces in any of the three um, directions, length, beam, or depth. So we're just going to increase the beam to 25 feet. And you see that change just occurred. And we just save that change. We're going to give it a, a new name. And we'll exit out of MaxSurf Modeler. And we'll open up MaxSurf Structure. And we'll open that model up. And what you'll notice is the new hull surfaces came in, uh, but and they're a little bit wider than what the structure was modeled at. So we're going to need to uh, to update the structure. So when you're working with a change like this, uh, that's uh, to the beam, it actually is almost automatic to make these updates. If you're making a change in the longitudinal direction or in the vertical direction. It's, it's not uh, automatic. Um, there still are a lot of tools to make the changes and the updates much quicker than it normally would take. Um, but when you're changing the beam, it really is very simple. And that's what we wanted to show you today. So keep an eye on the structure uh, in relation to the side of the hull. And in MaxServe structure, you have pull down menus for the frames, the decks, the stringers, and the plates. So we're simply going to recalculate all the frames first. And you just saw the frames move outboard. We're going to do the same thing for the decks and the same thing for the stringers. And I'm going to bump the frames one more time just to make sure that that change did happen. And finally, we want to also make sure the plates are updated. So what MaxSurf Structure does is 
it can work at different levels of precision. Uh, when you're doing the initial work, um, as a rule of thumb, it's good to work in, uh, in medium precision. But when you're at the end of uh, your, your task and you're ready to actually export uh, more accurate models, it's good to recalculate everything with the precision set at the highest level. But for what we're doing now, this is, this is fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm um, just rotating the model so you can see it. We'll turn the, uh, the plates off and we'll zoom in. And what you can see are the, the stiffeners passing through the, uh, the transverse frames, uh, fitting in the cutouts very nicely. And everything fits up against that hull uh, the way we want it to. Bulkheads look good. I'm working my way forward to see how model looks uh, all the structure up forward updated very well this is about as automatic as you can expect something to get I'll turn the plates back on so that works very nicely now a, a couple of features I want to show you while we have some time um, in max surf I've got a, uh, a very detailed report of all of the structure in the model. So I've got the data on the stringers, the frames, the decks, and the plates. I also have a very detailed part breakdown with uh, a detailed weight estimate of all the parts with weights and centers. So right now this model is built in aluminum and the total weight is about 13 and a half tons. But let's just say, hypothetically, we wanted to uh, change the material to steel. I want to see what that will do to the weight. If I wanted to change the, uh, the actual sections going the longitudinals, I could easily do that right here. It's a very easy change to make. Uh, but for uh, what we're doing today, let's just change the material. So I'll change it to steel. And this works just like a spreadsheet, so it's very easy to copy and paste. And that's what I just did here with uh, Control C and Control V. Um, I'm going to do the same thing with the, uh, the frames. So in these two columns, we're going to change that to steel. And for the decks and for the plates, we're going to change the material to steel. And we'll go over to the parts window and this is the total weight at the bottom and that will update simply by me going to each of these so first we're going to do the frames and as I recalculate the frames you see that weight in this column uh, update next we'll do the decks and then we'll do the stringers and finally the plates. So very quickly we're able to make these changes to this model and um, also very powerful is how much how helpful MaxSurf structure is to look at the producibility of the, the hull design from uh, a manufacturing perspective. So in this view I'm able to see uh, all of the transverse frames. This is a, a body plan. But I've also got a, a really good way of looking at all the detailed parts in the model. And um, that includes all of the plates, the frames, and the, uh, the stringers. So for each hull plate, for example, I can see an actual uh, expansion drawing of every plate and I can choose to turn the, uh, the lines on or off for the actual stringer fit up uh, as well as the frames. I simply toggle that on right here. Same thing with the frames. So in, uh, in actuality these would be included on the burning table as scribe lines so that when uh, they go to fit up to this, uh, they can actually fit the structure right to the lines. I can also see very useful information about the, uh, the girths 
going around the plate um, and it'll tell you uh, where the shrinkage is on any of the uh, or changes in length on any of the girths. The other thing that's very helpful is I can see the strain in the plate as a result of forming uh, in the form of a color plot. Uh, I can either look at uh, the strain in the direction of the forming or perpendicular to the forming. This is very, very powerful and it gives the, uh, the user a lot of valuable information on the producibility of, of the hull and the developable, um, how developable the surfaces are. Finally, what I wanted to also get across is this data, how easy it is to leverage this data for other aspects of the design spiral. So, for example, looking at this, uh, this weight report, um, very easily I can go under file and export that as a stability load group file. So you can see I already saved one here for aluminum and another one for steel. And I can just import that data file right into MaxSurf Stability to do all of my stability calculations with that revised design. The other thing I can easily do is export my structural parts either as DXF or IGES files. I can also export them into Ship Constructor as Ship Constructor files and I can also export them as native Rhino files. So this is extremely powerful and we're just about out of time but I wanted to um, give everybody a good idea of uh, what MaxSurf structure is capable of doing and there's a lot more information on our website at charlestonmarineconsulting.com. Thanks for joining us.